Lucia are Mega Venusaur, Heatran, and Gengar. Two, two, three. We'll see that we're missing a Pokemon there. Uh, we'll see it. We'll see it uh, once the battle starts. And of course, we have Jonathan Evans. Jonathan Evans is in game name. Ezreal. Ezreal is bringing a Blaziken. A Mega Kangaskhan, an Aegislash, a Hydreigon, a Clefable, and a Gyarados. All right, so we have his full team right there. Uh, notice that it's not, it's, it doesn't say Mega Blaziken, so no. we, at this point we do not know if it is a Mega Blaziken or not. That's not a Mega Blaziken. It's definitely not? No. Okay, there we go. Do you know from experience? Were you in the uh, tournament I, today? I've talked with Jonathan oh, a little okay, bit. Oh, okay, there we go. So I, I know his team was inspired by a German player, I believe, Yoshi, I'd like to say. Okay. Well, the Blaziken, at least. I gotcha. Well, that's that's really cool. It's going to be interesting to see. I haven't seen many Blaziken in VGC, so it'll be interesting to see exactly what they're going to do. Oh, yeah. I, I think Blaziken is a really strong Pokemon right now. I'm, I'm surprised a few more people aren't using it. Yeah. It beats stuff like Mega Kangaskhan. Yep. Uh, he's trying to take it out of the fighting side. Oh, move yeah. And kind of wall it there by resisting both of its stabs. Uh, as, as a commentator, I will not be partial to who I want to win, but Cybertron, I don't want to see you on the mic after this. Ooh. Do your best. Take it home. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see Cybertron play. I've watched a lot of his content on YouTube, but to see him play live is definitely a complete, like you said before, it's completely different. We're going to be able to see on his face uh, exactly what he's, he's going, as he spins the pen on stream. Look at, he's just chilling out. He's, he, there it's we go. really important to be able to be like calm before a battle. I hate to be psyched out or anything. Absolutely. So we can see the team that we had just said. Uh, Blaziken, Hydreigon, Club Fable, Gyarados, Aegislash, and a Mega Kangaskhan. So was that Gyarados Mega or was it no, regular? No, just standard. So the only Mega on Ezreal's team, Jonathan, is actually a Mega Kangaskhan. Against Aaron's team, because he has that Gengar and that Terrakia, we see some things that are threatening the Kangaskhan and that Jonathan doesn't have any other options. But since Kangaskhan tends to be just such a well-rounded Pokemon, maybe that's not a bad thing. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think that uh, this is going to be a really good game. And with things like his Aegislash, he can take on that Gengar and that Terrakion. Absolutely. The Terrakion, uh, most Terrakion, I I'm interested to see what Terrakion Cybertron is running as far as item-wise. Sash, Life Orb, Scarf. Uh, there's, there's options. Lom. Lom is the He's big item. Lom? I know okay. Aaron has used that. In oh, I can't say for sure today, but okay. we've seen Lom in the past. It's okay. a very popular item. Yeah, I mean, he was. we were just commentating before, and he was mentioning how uh, Lom could quite possibly be the best item in the game Ooh. because it's just so versatile. We saw in the last game, someone had snagged a freeze, and the Lom popped, and the Togekiss uh, thawed instantly thanks to the Lom, which was huge for that game. Actually, I, she ended up winning that game, probably because of that. I might have to call Citrus the best item in the game. Citrus but. is also a fantastic item, uh, has many uses. Uh, belly Drum, there's, there's so many different things. On fat Pokemon like Rotom Wash. Yeah, being it helps make Rotom as good as it is. Redirection Pokemon like Togekiss. I wouldn't be surprised if that Clefable has a Citrus yep. Berry. And we can see the clock going all the way down to the wire. Uh, there it is. We're going to jump into this match. They're shaking hands again. I love the competitive scene of Pokemon because everyone is so, you know, polite. And, you know, we're, we're in this. We're playing the game. You want to win, but you still have manners. Yeah. It's, you know, we're all people. It's fantastic. You can see Ezra. Like I said, uh, just a reminder, we were watching from Cybertron's point of view, and he opens up Gengar Suicune. That feels like a kind of safe, bulky lead. I don't have very many issues with it here. Yeah. And we see the Clefable and the Blaze can open up on the opposite side of the field. I gotta say, Cybertron side of the field is looking fashionable with the purple. Yeah. They're, they're color coordinated over there. Absolutely. And fantastic. I guess Jonathan has a little bit of the pale going on, pale and yeah. red kind of yeah. go together. He's ready to go. So Blaziken, it would be interesting to see Blaziken's not in a very good situation here. I would say this lead looks very convincingly in Aaron's favor with that Gengar. I know, I know that Aaron likes to use Sludge Bomb to drop yep. things on those fairy types. Suicune obviously has Skull or Hydro Pump for exactly. the fire type like Blaziken. So we're going to see Jonathan take back Blaziken in favor of a Hydreigon as 73 of the Gengar uses Taunt on the Clefable. Will Clefable have been going for up? Suicune sets up the Tailwind. Cybertron was talking so much about Tailwind. And uh, we can see that he's using it of his own. And Clefable goes for the Ice Beam on the Gengar. I believe that would probably be the check off of Gengar's Focus Sash, something that we often see on it. I, I know Aaron's used it in the past. Absolutely. Uh, interesting, interesting. I believe that Taunt must have been predicted because Clefable normally has a plethora of moves. Follow me, it has Helping Hand, yeah. So that, that Follow Me is going to be rendered useless now that it can't be used thanks to Taunt, which means that uh, 
Suicune and Gengar can kind of go in on this Hydreigon, but then again, Scar's Hydreigon is Even a if they doubled up on the Hydreigon, I'm not sure if they could take it out yeah. together. I mean, so. yeah, I don't know. Maybe an unstep Focus Blast and Ice Beam combination might not do the trick. But Focus Blast is not something you see on Gengar very often. I yeah. think Aaron is too safe of a player to yeah. even consider something like that. That makes like sense. That. He, was mentioning, he was talking a lot about accuracy and the fact yeah. that... You, in, in, in Pokemon being a game of luck, you want to reduce your luck to as little as possible, and a 70% accuracy focus blast yeah. is not something you want to rely on. And we see Clefable going out into Blaze again. Which is very interesting. Ooh. Sludge Bomb is going to go off on the Hydreigon. It's probably going to be a double on Hydreigon. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be a double, and the poison comes through off of the Sludge Bomb. Ice Beam as well. Let's see if this Sludge Bomb Ice Beam is enough to take it out. And it is Bring it hang again. Hangs Over it, a Draco gets, Meteor. Gets the Draco Meteor off on the sweet moon. Will it KO? I, I don't think it's going to KO, but it's going to do a lot. Yep. Yeah, around 66. Down to 60. Oh, and the Citrus yeah. pops on the sweet moon. Best item in the game? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately for Jonathan, that poison is going to come mean the end of the Hydreigon, uh, which isn't too big of a deal because both the Gengar and the sweet moon outsped it anyway. Yeah. Thanks to the Tailwind. This Blaziken being in here, though, with the Tailwind up and Suicune still being a threat on the field. Since Blaziken is coming in at the end of the turn, its, it's speed boost ability isn't going to get to activate. Exactly. So which it's might gonna... be harmful to Jonathan here. Absolutely. Relying on that speed boost is not its not going to come through for him this time around. With Kangaskhan on the field, though, we can see a, a, a potential fake out coming through. Oh, yeah. And with its a likely scrappy ability, it could even fake out Gengar if yep. it wanted to. Absolutely. Uh, if you don't know, Kangaskhan's regular ability for those at home is Scrappy, so it allows to hit a ghost type, a ghost type Pokemon with normal type moves, which normally cannot happen. Yeah. So not evolving your Kangaskhan turn one in order to fake out a Gengar is a completely solid. Play. And if Kangaskhan doesn't fake out the Gengar here, it's liable to get Will O Wisp. That's yep. not any fun for it. Of course. I think that would cripple one of Jonathan's like major ways of dealing damage now that his Hydreigon is out of the picture. Yeah. With that Cliff Fable in the back, that's not a Pokemon you think you co you go to when you need damage. Yeah. I know, I'm pretty sure that Jonathan's going to want to get rid of this Gengar. He is going to fake out the Gengar, because like you just said, with a Fable in the back, you don't want a Poison-type running around. Uh, Suicune's going to get a Scald off, oh, and one-shot the Blaziken. Well, I was looking forward to seeing Blaziken in action, yeah. but it looks like we won't get that in Not this match here. today. Not today. Cybertron looking, uh, he's got a little smile on his face, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's good for him. Yeah. Uh, being up by two pokes right here. Uh, fake out is no longer an option, and it looks as though Gengar is going to be able to hit that Clefable pretty hard, unless the Sucker Punch comes through from the Kangaskhan. But even at that point, the, um, Gengar might want to do something like, like will o -Wisp, like Taunt. Yep. Considering what Aaron has in the back, I, I think it's pretty clear what he wants to do. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Taunt on the Clefable, just to prevent any shenanigans, uh, and then have a Scald from the Suicune hit the game. Yeah, but if I was Jonathan, I might want to do something like Double Edge or a turn on the Suicune with Gengar, and just Ice Beam the Gengar. I think that's a pretty safe way to take a double KO yep. for him. I would, Try I would and put so. himself back in the picture. Yeah, unfortunately, though, uh, you know, that happens... I think the Tailwind is still up, which means that Gengar and Suicune yeah. are both going to outspeed and get a Scald and a Sludge Bomb off. Potentially taking out, you could, uh, Cybertron could double up a Clefable yeah. if Sludge Bomb's not enough. So we'll see what's going to happen right here. Kangaskhan is going to opt to Mega Evolve. So that means it's not going to be going for anything like a scrappy return on Gengar. Ac absolutely. Are we going to see a Sucker Punch? We see a will o, -wisp will -o -wisp from Gengar. That Clefable does not opt to follow me away. Nope. Wow. Had the Clefable gone for the follow me, that would have been a very... Uh, a, a pretty bad turn for Cybertron, however, uh, Aaron's going to pull through with a Scald on the Ooh, Kangaskhan. Ooh, power punch, I like that. We see the power punch on the Suicune, unfortunately, though, with that burn. Suicune's just going to eat that up like it's a breakfast sandwich. But it is going to negate the effects of the burn on Kangaskhan. This is true. And Clefable is going to take out Gengar, not worried about being taunted or sludge bombed anymore. So it looks, it looks as though uh, you were correct about Jonathan going for a double attack, trying yeah. to get a double down. Unfortunately, though, uh, he opted, I mean, not that unfortunately, he opted to set up his Kangaskhan a little bit to try to get himself back yeah. in the game. But with that burn, I was wrong about him going for a normal type attack. Power yeah. Punch is a good way to keep himself in this. Absolutely. Uh, we don't know exactly what Cybertron has in the back. He's going to go out into the Venusaur. And uh, since we know this to be a Mega Venusaur, I think... John thinks this is going to be hard pressed to do any real damage to it at this Absolutely. point. With its thick fat ability, Clefable's ice beams effectively aren't super effective against it. 
Tangish gone is, it can't do too much to it. Venusaur is just a very bulky Pokemon. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, with the Suicune there, being able to just do chip damage on the Kangaskhan, uh, I would have been surprised if Cybertron opts to go for a Sludge Bomb on the Clefable and just yeah. get it out of the picture as soon as possible. And or vice versa, double up on the Kangaskhan. Yeah. Because it seems to be the only thing that's going to really be able to do Yeah, anything. if I were Aaron here, I would just want to get the Kangaskhan out of the picture. He knows it probably can't protect since it has Fake Out. Yep. So we're going to see the Mega Evolution on the Venusaur, growing trees on its back, and Clefable's going to go for Ooh. Helping Hand. We on might see it try to take out the Venusaur here. We're going to see a neutral base attack return on the Venusaur. Without a crit, though, it is not going to be enough, and Cybertron breathes a breath of fresh, uh, of sigh of relief, actually. And Scald is going to come through on the oh. Kangaskhan. Sludge Bomb Sludge on the bomb Kangaskhan. Finish the job. We were correct in thinking that uh, Aaron was going to double up on the Kangaskhan, and uh, it looks like, with us being in a best of one situation due to a time constraint, it looks like Jonathan is going to be saying goodbye, but both players played very well. Oh, yeah, I would certainly have to say so. And there is that handshake. I think uh, part of what gave Aaron the win there was how much damage he was able to get on Jonathan's powerhouse Pokemon early on, particularly that Hydreigon. Absolutely. The Blaziken as well. Getting rid of that Hydreigon by doubling up. That Toxic, I mean, then again, he would have outspent and followed up, but that Toxic just helped secure yeah. a little bit of comfort after seeing and with, the Ice Beam. with a 30% on Sludge Bomb, you have to expect that it's going to happen some Absolutely. of the time. It's not like a 10% freeze on Ice Beam yeah. where you want to rip your hair out. Not at all. Uh, I'm going to try to give Cybertron a little thumbs up, and I believe he's just going to stay where he is. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure which match we're going to run yet. We have two semis matches. We have Jab Jabberwocky versus Jive Time. And we, okay, so you're going to do that one, Jabberwocky and Jive Time? Okay, so that's the next match. All right, so Jabberwocky versus Jive Time. So really quick, before these players get set up, we can go ahead and look at their teams. Jabberwocky over here. Is that Jabberwocky? No, that's, that's Jive, Jive Time. Time. Let's go with Jive Time. Go ahead, read that, read that off. Uh, Jive Time is going to have a Heatran, a Mega Kangaskhan, a Cresselia, a Breloom, a Landorus Therian, and a Zapdos. Oh, wow. So that seems and, like a pretty good uh, butter where's Jabberwocky? Jabberwocky, I see... Is that Jabberwocky? No, it's Geo. Um, oh, no. It doesn't look like we have Jabberwocky's team just yet. Jessica, Chimpact, Dragonite, Cinderella, Story, Cybertron. We don't have Jabberwocky just yet. I'm going get to a, get a hold of Cybertron when I can to go ahead and grab that yeah. team. But let's talk about... Let's talk about... Uh, Jive Time's Jive team. Jive Time's team. We see, uh, like you just said, it's Heatran, Mega Kangaskhan, Cresselia, Breloom, Landorus, Dean, Zapdos. I think this is the first time we're going to see a Breloom in top uh, on stream. Yeah. It's something that we saw a lot of back in 2013 when it was still legal, but this format, I'm not sure. There's a lot of stuff like Kangaskhan can return or double edge to avoid a focus sash yep. on it. Just get around it with the two hits. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, that sport does come in handy, but if it's not under a trick room, which it doesn't look like this... I mean, this could potentially, with Crest... Uh, Even if Cresselia doesn't have Trick Room, it does have access to other forms of speed control, like Thunder Wave, Icy yep. Wind. I don't think Jive Time Team has, like, enough options for Trick Room. I wouldn't expect no, that I would, at all. I would expect that. With but Landers Thunder team, Wave or Icy Wind, I would fully expect to see one of those. Absolutely. So it's going to be interesting to see this match. They're setting up right now. You're going to come up? All right. So, so I think Cybertron's going to be coming back. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask him for... Uh, we have Jive Time's team, but it looks like we need... Hold on one second, guys. Cybertron, uh, we don't... Oh, okay, true. We just don't have both teams. We only have Jive Time. So the player is going to be going ahead and giving us his team so that we can do an appropriate breakdown of it. Cybertron was going to jump on the mic, but he realized that the potential of him versing one of these players is oh, high. That's true. So he doesn't want to commentate the match and get all that extra information for nothing. Uh, I'm hearing this Smash player music in the background. It sounds so epic. It really is, you guys. Uh, Salty Sweet is still going on. And Can you explain to me what Salty Sweet is? Salty, Salty Sweet is essentially uh, the fight club of the Smash community where uh, anyone that talks...